well, I'm back to you into today's video. We're going to have a look at weather for the next uh, few days in, in uh, today's video. It's going to be turning colder at the weekend and into next week. But there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of discrepancy uh, between the models about how cold it's going to get, if it's going to turn wintry, uh, how long it's going to last. So have a look through the charts and see what they're showing uh, this morning. Now, before we get on video, I just want to mention the advertising about usually be a video ad over there. My weather videos at gaswebbiz.com. Please pay those video ads, you'll be supporting gaswebbiz.com by doing that. So this radar picture is indicating a cold front coming down across the country. This is the start of the change, really. Uh, behind this is a scraggly area of rain. Uh, we've got much cooler air starting to filter. And actually, it's near normal air, but it's much cooler compared to what we've been used to since the new year. And that's going to be with us for the rest of the working week. And as we go into the weekend, remember, it's going to start to introduce even colder air uh, from the continent. Now the stratospheric warming that I've been talking about in recent videos is still going on. Yesterday I said that uh, I showed you that uh, we'd have the stratospheric warming occurring. It's still occurring. Temperatures are still shooting up here in the uh, stratosphere at 10 HPA, which is about as far up as we can go into the stratosphere. And uh, yeah, the uh, stratospheric warming going on there. Uh, we're waiting for it now to start propagating down into the troposphere. And once it does, it should start to set up some blocking areas of high pressure uh, over the uh, North Pole. Actually, if we go to 30 HPA, which is a little bit lower in the stratosphere, we can see that we're beginning to propagate that warming down into 30 HPA. Uh, the temperatures there are beginning to uh, push up as well. So, we've just got to wait for that to occur. And uh, once it is there in the uh, troposphere, once it's propagated down through the troposphere, uh, then it's a case of uh, waiting for the blocks to set up. But in this period uh, where the stratospheric warming is going on, but before it propagates into the troposphere, uh, the models really struggle because they're aware uh, that the uh, stratospheric warming is taking place, uh, but they aren't uh, sure where that blocking uh, will be setting up. So we run through many scenarios. Uh, models swing wildly uh, from run to run and from model to model. And uh, really... Uh, they just can't pick up on the signal. They know something's happening, but they don't know where and how extensive it's going to be. Uh, so if we have a look at the GFS, this is for 10 days' time, Tuesday the 15th of January. Uh, we can see that uh, the, uh, it's, this is for 8 days' time, sorry, I should say Tuesday the 15th of January. We've got the low pressure up here to the northeast of Scotland. We've got this area of high pressure ridging out in the uh, Atlantic and up towards Greenland as well. This is quite a cold or cool sort of signal. It's not desperately cold, but it is cool. And uh, as we run through to the 10 day period, we see that the blocking is intensified here uh, to the north and the northeast of the country from Scandinavia through to Greenland. Uh, these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic are being blocked and we've got a weather front here uh, that's probably producing quite a lot of snow and if we go further on with this uh, to Tuesday the 20th of January this is 300 hours away a long way out but we can see that the cold blocks actually won the battle uh, we're bringing in this bitterly bitterly cold easterly wind and the uh, areas of low pressure being pushed southwards in towards uh, the Mediterranean with the jet stream going a long way south in towards North Africa now that's a long way out but it's the sort of potential that there is uh, when you get a stratospheric warming but I think not all models are agreeing uh, with this we'll have a look at the ECM in a moment there's the upper air temperatures for Tuesday the 20th of January bitterly cold there over Scandinavia really severely cold and that's heading our way on that easterly wind but I say not all models agree with this if we, this is the ECM WF this morning uh, for a week's time Tuesday the 15th of January uh, it's got an area of low pressure out to the northwest Scotland. We're bringing the weather front down across the country. That's coming into quite cold air, actually. There's the upper air temperatures. Uh, quite cold there for Tuesday, the 15th of January. So I think we would be expecting some uh, rain turning to snow, probably, as it pushes south and east across the country uh, with that. But beyond that, to the 10-day period, then the ECMWF brings up this very balmy southwesterly wind. And uh, we can see we've got high pressure here setting up over Spain and France again, bringing up this very mild uh, southwesterly from the tropical land. So that's totally, totally different uh, to the GFS. It's quite unusual to see uh, the ECM and the GFS so different uh, at 10 days out. But there we are. There is a big discrepancy there between those two models uh, for the 10-day period. The uh, GFS will be giving us a lot of snow and very cold weather. The ECM uh, will be giving us a taste of spring at 10 days. 
Now we have a look at the Canadian model, the GEM, that's showing that for a week's time we've got high pressure ridging in the Atlantic going up towards Greenland, this area of low pressure uh, to the northeast. So this is quite cool, we're bringing down a cool uh, north to a northwesterly wind. What happens once we get to the 10 day period? Well, the GEM uh, wants to build this area of high pressure in across the country and starts ridging up Richard up towards Scandinavia. So uh, the GM probably siding more with the GFS actually uh, than the ECM, which is something else that's quite unusual. Normally the Canadian model goes with the uh, European, tends to, but this morning I think really uh, the Canadian model is more in the cold camp actually uh, for the 10 day period with this area of high pressure building across the country and going up to Scandinavia. So uh, very, very uncertain really for the uh, eight to 10 day period. Probably on the balance of probability, uh, it's looking more uh, towards cold, uh, but uh, the ESM can't be discounted and its mild uh, solution for the 10 day period uh, certainly needs to be uh, taken on board. And as I said at the beginning of the video, all of these swings and changes really are, uh, it's really just the models trying to deal with this sudden stratospheric warming, trying to work out uh, where it's propagating down into the troposphere and what the implications of that are going to be. Now, if we go on and have a quick look at the weekend, because I've been talking about uh, the chance of some snow over the weekend, well, we see that uh, for Saturday, we've got this area of low pressure coming in across the country on the uh, GFS. That is uh, not moving into particularly cold air, though. Uh, we have got some cold air established through Saturday up to Scotland and Northern England, but not so much for England and Wales. It's really England and Wales where the, uh, where the uh, uh, rain is going to be, precipitation is going to be on Saturday so you would expect most of that to be rain because uh, the uh, cold air is really away to the north and the northeast of the country uh, on Saturday. But as we go through into Saturday night that area of low pressure starts to dig away uh, towards France and then we begin to pull down cold air across the country as these two areas of high pressure from the Atlantic and from Scandinavia begin to uh, move towards one another so then we are starting to bring down colder air uh, across the country and maybe on the back edge of the, that uh, precipitation there could be some wintry weather so we see that the dew points are going below freezing widely on Saturday night into Sunday morning. Now, there's not a lot of precipitation here across England Wales, but there is some, it's suggested, across the south and the southeast. Uh, so, some of that could turn wintry on Saturday night. You may get up to a dusting of snow in one or two places on a Sunday morning, but it certainly won't be much. Actually, more in way of precipitation for Scotland there, and uh, a lot of that could be uh, wintry, and that uh, continues really as we go in towards uh, Sunday uh, morning. Now going beyond this, in towards uh, Monday, we see that we've got this area of low pressure starting to dig down uh, from the north as we go into uh, Sunday night, Monday morning. This one is also quite interesting as well because that's coming into some uh, quite cold air. Uh, so again, if you have a look at precipitation extent, we see we've got quite a bit of precipitation across the country on uh, on uh, Monday. And uh, again, I say that's m moving in some quite cold air. So uh, we do have to be uh, watching out, I think, through Sunday night into Monday. That might be our greatest risk uh, through the weekend period, Sunday night into Monday, as an area of rain moves down from the north and the northwest. Coming into cold air, uh, that could give some snow. Probably turning to rain, uh, but could give some snow for a time. And in eastern parts of the country, uh, we may hang on to the cold air long enough for uh, much of that to uh, that precipitation to fall as snow. But uh, there's not going to be a great deal of snow over the weekend, I don't think. Uh, will be some winter weather around the time, but not a huge amount. Um, but it's certainly getting colder over the weekend. It's turning cooler from today or from tonight onwards, uh, cold into the weekend. And then for next week, still very, very uncertain what happens. Balance of probability, probably for it to stay cold uh, or get even colder. Um, but uh, we can't discount the ECM WF, which turns it milder uh, later next week. Come back tomorrow, I'll be doing the five day forecast, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.